Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the applications of timing within brushless motor setups. Now we're gonna answer a few questions throughout this video. One of them being, do you have to change the motor timing within a setup? The second being, when should you change the motor timing within a setup? Then we're gonna be looking at the high, the applications of high motor timing, the applications of low motor timing, and then ending off with changing timing, where should you start? So let's get started by answering our first question. Do you have to change the timing within a brushless motor setup? The short answer to this question is no, you really don't have to change it in most cases. Now, in probably 19 out of 20 different setups, you will not have to change the timing within that setup. There's only a couple times that I've personally had an encounter where I had to change the timing because the setup did not work. And we'll get to that very soon within the video. Now for the rest of the times, the 19 where it does work, it works because ESCs today, electronic speed controls, they have a wide range of motors that they can be married up to and work very well. The performance that you get out of these motors is also quite decent for the default settings. So there's no real reason for these setups that you'd have to go and change the motor timing. So then that begs the question of when should you change the motor timing? Well, there's three primary reasons why you'd want to go in and change the motor timing. One of them being, like we just spoke about, is when you have an issue with the motor synchronization uh, with the electronic speed control. And we'll talk about that, like I said, very shortly within the video. The second reason why you'd want to go and change the motor timing within your setup is to gain an additional bit of performance out of your setup. And you'd gain that additional performance by seeing higher output RPMs from your brushless motor. The third reason as to why you'd want to go and change your motor timing setup is because you want to experience or achieve lower operating temperatures or higher torque or just in general better efficiencies with longer runtime because you don't need the performance side of, of it. So we'll look at that more specifically. Let's start with applications of high motor timing. So a perfect example of an application of high motor timing when I wanted to go and increase the motor timing within my setup is when I used to race electric boats, I knew that my I knew my setup very well. And I knew that my setup operating at 37, 38 miles an hour was about as much as the hull can handle, the boat can handle until it may do, you know, fly off the water or start begin to be unstable and that sort of thing. However, my current setup only operated at about 35, 36 miles an hour. Because I raced it, that extra two miles an hour would have been perfect. Now one may say I can simply go and increase the pitch of my prop or the size of my prop and that would do it. Well, when I ended up changing the size of my prop, it caused the boat to act completely different. I found a prop that I really liked the handling and how it acted all around the course. So what I really wanted to do to gain that extra bit of performance is to increase my motor timing. I went ahead and increased the timing. I did see higher temperatures within the setup. However, I gained my extra two miles an hour and the boat was still stable and all in all, everything worked out and I got what I wanted to achieve out of the timing. So that's one reason why you'd want to go and change the motor timing. You're not going to get a huge increase or huge boost in performance, but if you're looking for something that's somewhat subtle like I was, that you may expect. And you have to be able to measure it and measure the, the power consumption as well as temperatures. And we'll talk about that at the very end of the video in a little more detail. So another reason why you'd want to go and change your setup to a higher timing is because you're trying to extract every drop of speed out of your setup at the sacrifice of possibly additional heat and um, in terms of the power consumption. That is the other reason of why you'd want to go to a high motor setup, a high timing for your, your setup. Now let's talk about what we were referring to earlier in the video here. Now another reason why you'd want to go and increase the motor timing is because you have a problem with your brushless electronic speed control and your brushless motor. Now quite commonly the problem that I'm referring to is known as the motor screeching. This can happen and I've encountered a situation myself when I was operating a brushless outrunner where I increased the throttle on a specific propeller on an airplane 
And as I was under hard acceleration to spin that propeller up at high RPM, the motor started screeching and it was screeching quite loudly. It's that really annoying. It's like, you know, someone putting their fingernails on a chalkboard. That's how I can describe it. It just doesn't sound good at all. So one of the things that I learned at that time is if I actually increase the timing of this setup, I will move away from that issue. And that issue was really the synchronization between the electronic speed control as well as the brushless motor. When I increased the timing, it fixed the problem and I was now able to operate that brushless motor with no problems. So that's another reason why you'd want to go and use you know, the high motor timing within your electronic speed control. Now let's talk about the flip of that. If we look at applications of using a low motor timing, why would you want to go ahead and do that? Well, we talked a little bit about that earlier in the video. Applications of the low motor timing would be if you want to go and increase the torque output of your brushless motor setup. That torque output is going to happen on the lower RPM of things and it's going to cost you the higher end RPM output. Now other benefits that you can achieve out of this is better efficiencies as well as better runtime, more runtime. So if your application is just sport boating, you know, flying around and you don't really need the performance, you're looking for a more efficient setup, using a lower motor timing as long as your setup will allow may be beneficial to you. So it's a good thing to maybe go ahead and experiment with the different types of timing that work for your application. Now, if we want to do just that, you want to experiment to see what timing can offer for your application, for your setup, there's a good way that you're able to start and not cause any harm. The best and most recommended way that I would say is to start on the low end of timing. Generally speaking, starting on the low end of timing is not going to cause you a lot of problems unless you get into that synchronization thing that we were just speaking about. But now you're able to recognize what that is, screeching at high RPM under acceleration or load. If you see that, you're going to have to increase your RPM. In fact, it's so easy that if you operate your, your radio control vehicle after setting the timing to low, go ahead, measure the temperatures measure the performance that you're getting out of it if it's a radio control car see how fast you're going at the top speed this way when you go and change your motor timing you'll know exactly what the benefits are what you're getting out of that change now once you have that data go ahead and increase the timing to a medium setting and measure all the same stuff measure power if you're able to do that measure the temperatures of the motor and again you want to capture the speed the speed the top speed of the vehicle once you've done that, you can go to the last setting, the high motor timing setting to see if you're able to get and extract more performance out of it. If you're able to extract more power out of the high motor timing and your temperatures are not over the maximum values, this is something that you're able to stick with. Now we do have to cover a few little bit of a few odds and ends of what specific motors prefer what type of timing. So if you're using a brushless motor that has literally one turn, so one winding within it, and it's a de-wound motor, this is one of the hottest setups that you can find out there, especially if it's a four-pole in-runner. This type of setup generally does not like high timing. I would actually say avoid going up into the high timing range. Stick with the low timing you have a motor that has a, an incredible amount of power potential and you don't really need to go up anything more than the low timing setting. Now, if you have a brushless motor that has a high count in terms of your poles, in terms of the brushless motor poles, you'll probably want to have a high motor timing setup. As you increase the number of poles in a brushless motor, timing should be higher. Now your brushless motor does operate within a range. So if you select the medium timing, it's going to operate within a range of timing as the load increases and decreases, as it measures the back EMF from that sensorless brushless motor modes, you're going to get the ESC compensating for those differences. When you select low, medium, high, you're really selecting either, let's say, the low range or the medium range or the high range in terms of your timing output. That is how the brushless motors, uh, the timing within the speed controls works. All right, guys, so you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.